before you, standing before you and the people of God, Lord Jesus, in my home, giving you praise, glory, and honor to present a word that you have given to me. Lord, I ask that you would bless me right now. Bless the hearers of the word, that they may not be hearers only, but that they may also be doers of the word. In Jesus' name, allow me to speak the word as you have given it to me. Allow my nerves to settle, Lord Jesus, that you speak to me and I speak to the people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are living in unprecedented times. Pastor Roy has been bringing the word Sunday after Sunday since March. And we are grateful to God for him and the anointing that he has placed on his life. Today I stand before you giving Pastor Roy rest and being able to be obedient to God, speaking the word he has given me. We retain 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we hear and see, 70% of what we say, and 90% of what we say and do. So in the comfort of your homes, I want you to speak the word and do it. Today's message is, lean on me. Today's message is, lean on me. And I'll be coming from Genesis 2, 18, Isaiah 41, 10, Jeremiah 29, 11, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Lean on me. Lean on me. We all need people for a variety of reasons and many purposes. God created us to be relational beings. Genesis 2 and 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. It is not good to be isolated. It's not good to be by yourself 100% of the time with no human interactions. We need people. We are social beings. We rely on relationships. Family, friends, marriage, work, even some of our pets. Good, healthy relationships benefit us mentally, socially, emotionally, and physically. The feeling of loneliness carries baggage too great for us to carry by ourselves for a long period of time. But God reassures us throughout his word that with him on our side, we are never alone. We are never alone. So if you're by yourself, say, I am never alone. I am never alone. God is on my side. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious hand. At some point in time, we have all felt fear. We have all felt doubt. We have all felt uncertainty. We have all been drained. We have been drained mentally, spiritually, physically. During this pandemic, many feelings have surfaced because we are humanistic beings with real feelings and emotions. But when we're afraid, discouraged, and weak, we must encourage ourselves with God's word. God is constantly saying, lean on me. God is constantly telling us through his word, lean on me. Bill Withers wrote a song, and here's some of the lyrics. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. You may be going through today. You may be feeling down. You may be feeling afraid and anxious and scared and discouraged and weak. But trouble don't last always. It doesn't last always. Jesus is saying, lean on me. Leaning on someone requires you to trust. You're trusting that the person will hold you up while you're leaning. You're not expecting them to let you fall. Have you ever gone to the grocery store and grabbed a cart and just leaned on the cart? You know that that cart is going to provide some type of stability as you're walking through the store. That cart isn't going to let you fall. So you lean and you walk. Have you ever walked with an elderly person? to provide assistance to that person, and that person is leaning and trusting on you to get them from point A to point B. Some of us have trust issues 
because of past hurts and pains that we haven't healed from. And we're fearful, fearful to lean on someone. We rather fall than to trust. But Jesus is that friend we can trust. He's waiting for us to lean on him. James Fortune said, I trust you, Lord. Lord, it's not easy. Now think about some of the things that you're going through, that you've gone through, that you're still going through. The unfavorable medical diagnosis, receive the hurts, the heartaches, the pains, the loss of loved ones. Lord, it's not easy, but I trust you. Sometimes the pain in my life makes you seem far away. How many of you at some point in time you said, Lord, where are you? God, where are you? I don't feel you. I don't see you. Where are you in this situation? But James Fortune said, but I trust you. Can you still trust God in the midst of everything you're going through? We have to trust God and the process he takes us through and lean on him. Each of us has a different story to tell about the process. And if we listen to each other's story, we can appreciate each other. We can sympathize and empathize and love each other through the process. In March, when COVID-19 caused the world to shut down, none of us imagined seven months later, this virus would still be attacking people throughout the world. No cure, no widespread vaccine, no unified plan, a broken economy, racial tension, and simply chaos throughout the world. What have we learned? I believe God speaks and he provides learning opportunities for each of us in every given situation. Whether you're in a classroom with others or in a room by yourself, learning can take place in the right atmosphere. When the learner is focused and has minimal distractions or no distractions at all. During this time of COVID-19 and mandatory social distancing, God has set the stage for learning. Our pace of living has slowed down we haven't gone out as much as we did prior to COVID, attended less face-to-face -face gatherings, work looks different, school looks different, the grocery store looks different, the grocery store shelves look different. The world is different, face masks, hand sanitizers all over the place, six feet apart, social distancing, temperature checks. What have we learned? Have we learned to pray more? Have we learned to lean on Jesus? Another old time church song says, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Jesus is saying, lean on me. When you lean on Jesus and you connect to the power source, he gives you power and strength to endure. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious hand. Jesus is with you. He is God. He is your strength. He gives strength. He helps and he supports. Imagine how a child feels when he or she is picked up. The feeling of that comfort, that peace, that support, that connection, that love. Jesus said, I will hold you up with my victorious hand. Lean on Jesus. In that verse, Jesus said, I am your God. He is reassuring us that he's everything that we need. He will provide all of the necessities. And Psalms 37 says he will even meet the desires of your heart. So in addition to those necessities being met, if you exalt God, you delight yourself in him, he will give you your wants. He reminds us many times, many times that he is God, that he has us, that he's got us. But we block our own blessings when we fail to trust and we fail to lean on him. In the midst of COVID, some people may be questioning still, where is God? Where is God? Jesus is with us. Matthew 28 and 20 says, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Jesus is with us. He has minimized the distractions. He has changed our location. As you see, I am in the comfort of my home, bringing the word to you. God has changed the distractions, minimized them, and changed our location. Are we optimizing the opportunity he's given us to pray, to meditate, to study his word, and to listen to God? Are we learning how to genuinely love one another? I'm not talking about just saying, I love you one moment, and stabbing somebody in the back the next. 
I'm not talking about saying I love you and then killing somebody with your tongue. I mean really loving and appreciating one another and the relationships that God has allowed you to build. God has a purpose in all of our relationships. Not all of them are meant to last forever. Some of them are short term. Some of them are short lived. Knowing that purpose is over and move in love. When a teacher prepares for a lesson, he or she thinks about the end result. Where do I want my students to be at the end of this lesson? What do I want my students to learn? What's the end result? And this teacher works backwards to create the process to get the students to the end. Jesus has a desired ending for us all. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We all have to go through the process to get to the desired end. The process isn't always easy. The process doesn't always feel good. The process doesn't always look good. The process doesn't always look appealing. There are struggles in the process. You have to pray throughout the process. You have to establish good relationships to support yourself through the process. You have to love people throughout the process. During this process, you can only live your life. You can't live it for somebody else. You have to live your life. So in this whole process, are you learning to trust God? I, can com I can't complete the process for my kids. I can't complete the process for my husband, for my siblings, for my parents. This is an individual process. Jesus is saying, come to me. Trust me. Lean on me. Matthew 28 Matthew 11, 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all you, who are, all you who are weary and burdened. You have things weighing you down. You have problems. You have unrest. You have no peace. Jesus is saying, come to me, and I will give you rest. He will give you that peace of mind. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. A yoke is a wooden cross piece that is fastened together over the necks of two animals, and it's attached to a plow or a cart. That can that's used to pull um, things. Jesus used a lot of metaphors and illustrations in his teachings. Jesus is saying, take my yoke and I will pull you through and I will pull you out. For I am gentle and I am humble and I am humble in heart and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you leaning on Jesus? Can you trust Jesus? You don't have to carry everything. Now imagine this, you're in the store and you didn't take a cart and you're putting everything in your arms and you're piling your arms up and you're carrying and your arms are overfilled and, and you're loading yourself down and now your heart is heavy. Think about this, your heart is heavy, your mind is scattered, your vision is cloudy. You're peeping through the stuff to see your way. Stop trying to carry all of your burdens and everyone else's burdens and give it to Jesus. Jesus is saying, drop it all. Give it all to me. Trust me. Lean on me. If you drop that weight, you will feel much lighter. You'll be free. Jesus has healing and rest for your soul. Healing and rest for your soul. Lean on me. Lean on me. In my closing, what hinders learning? What hinders learning? Atmosphere. Distractions. Lack of focus. Sometimes you have to change your location. You have to remove yourself from some folk so that you can focus and learn. God has interrupted our norm. Social distancing, working from home, wearing a mask in public. During that time, these last seven months, what have you learned? Have you learned how to appreciate life? Have you learned how to appreciate others, love others? Trust God, lean on Jesus. Jesus is saying, lean on me. If you're listening and you haven't accepted Jesus as your savior and you're ready to make that move, you're ready to, to be on the side, you're ready to lean on Jesus, you're ready to depend on him, you're ready to trust him, you wanna make heaven your final destination, the Bible says all you have to do, all you have to do is confess with your mouth that you are a sinner, that you were born in sin, and, and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins. 
He rose again. Accept him into your heart and you are saved. You are part of the family of Christ. Wherever you are, you can pray the prayer. You can say, Lord, come into my heart, come into my life. Accept me, Jesus, just as I am. Jesus will accept you and you will be a part of the family of Christ. Next, what you need to do is stay connected. Get connected to a Bible-believing church, a Bible-teaching church, and grow your spiritual man. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the souls that are coming to you. We thank you for the souls after hearing the word, lean on me, Lord, that they're coming to you. We thank you for the people that heard the word, Lord, as they hear the word months later, years later, whenever it may be, Lord, we ask that you will bless their ears as they hear, allow them and allow the word to seep down into their spirit, Lord, allow you to work in their lives, Lord, that you will compel them and propel them to lean on you. For you are our strength. You are our source. So we give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. We thank you for the first responders, the essential workers, the teachers, the students that are in the classroom, the elderly, those with pre-existing medical conditions, Lord, keep them protected. Those with COVID-19, Lord, heal their bodies, heal the world, heal the nation. In the name of Jesus, we will continually give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Pastor Cook often says, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Meet it in your heart. God bless you.